Josh Smith with GottaBeMobile.com. This is a look at the new features in iOS 11. One of the first things you'll notice is that there's lots of changes to the icons on the screen when you're talking about Apple apps. Also, as we look up at the top, we notice that there's some new icons for charging, new icons for cellular and Wi-Fi. So you start to see a variety of changes there. Now if we go into the dialer, we start to see a new look there. If we go into something like messages, all of these iOS apps are gonna have a big, bold part at the top that really shows you where you're at. And so we're going to see a variety of these across different apps and even into settings. So there's a big area up top where it's gonna tell you what it is. Sometimes you can search from there. It really all depends what's going on. The next big difference that you'll see is Control Center. So here in the Control Center area, we have a ton of new options, and I can 3D touch on them to pull up more options and get different control of the device. You'll see here they've added a night shift toggle in there. I can control my volume, and I can also access a variety of other devices or I should say other options right from here and you can go into your music and see more and all of this is customizable so if we go into settings and find control center we can customize it and here we have a bunch of options and if I want to change that position I can drag it down if I want to remove something I can tap that minus and remove it I can go down here and add something else to the control center and those changes will appear right on here. So you have a lot more customization and you can control this bottom layer of items. There are a lot of new Siri features and options in iOS 11. Here's a few of them. When you go into settings, you'll now be able to change the accent and the gender of Siri without changing what Siri can actually do based on language. You have the same controls over voice feedback, etc. But now we're starting to see Siri suggestions inside of other apps. So inside of these third-party apps, Siri's going to be able to do more. Siri will also sync between your devices. Now another cool Siri feature is the ability to translate into another language. So I can say, how do I say I need to use the restroom in Chinese? And not only do I see that, so I could show someone the message on my phone, but it will actually say it and I can press the play button to play it over again. One of the biggest changes outside of Control Center is the Notification Center. So when I swipe down, I'm actually taken to basically the lock screen, so it's pulling double duty as the notification center. I can see my most recent notifications as well as those from earlier today. I can swipe to clear or view, or I can swipe to the other side to open and go straight into that option and even control some things straight from there. Now, while I'm in this area, I can swipe to the side to access my widgets or to the other side. Now, you can push the home button to go back to your home screen, or if you wanna get back there without pushing your home button, just swipe up quickly from the bottom edge of your screen and you'll... Apple's now added a one-handed keyboard option that you can quickly get to. You just need to tap and hold on the emoji icon on your keyboard. And now you'll see two options left and right. And if I tap that, it'll move the keyboard to one of the sides. And this will allow you, if you're not used to or if you can't reach all the way across uh, the phone screen on a larger device, you'll still be able to type pretty quickly. It's almost about the size of the keyboard on, say, the iPhone SE. The Files app is another new iOS 11 feature and basically gives you access to your iCloud Drive right from your iPhone or iPad. So you can search for items and then download and or play them directly from your iPhone so that you can access them and you can even, depending on the file type, send it to different things. I can tag it, add it to notes, and even airdrop right from there. Now I can also, in addition to searching, I can browse through there so I can see my iCloud desktops and I'm gonna be able to access files that are on there. And really go through even different documents that I've saved 
on my various devices to iCloud. So you're really gonna have full access to all of your items. It works way better than trying to find them through a third-party app or just to randomly find them. We're all familiar with Do Not Disturb, but now there's Do Not Disturb while driving. The easiest way to activate that is to swipe up and tap on this car. And so I'm not gonna get notifications while I'm driving, but people who text me can get a notification back that I'm busy. So in the activation area for Do Not Disturb, I can set this up. So I have it set up to activate when I am connected to my car's Bluetooth. You can also choose automatically, which will do it based on your motion, but it will do it then even if you're just driving in the car, or I should say riding in the car. And you can also do it manually. Now you can auto reply to your recents, to favorites, to all contacts, or to no one, and they'll get a message like what you see right here. You can customize this, and that way you're gonna be able to get in touch with them later. If someone sends you a message as urgent, it's going to break through and it will notify you. So you don't have to worry about not getting a very important message from someone while you're using this feature. iMessage apps are nothing new, but one of the really cool features is that it's gonna be a lot easier to use them. So if I tap this app button, just to the left of iMessage, I'm going to be able to access these and it's a lot easier to find them in here and use them than doing so on iOS 10 where you ended up with really odd kind of ways to dig in and actually get to the stickers or images or music that you wanna share. There are two new screen effects in iOS 11, so I'm going to type a message and I'm going to 3D touch with this arrow and then tap on screen. So the first one is echo and the second one is spotlight and both of them will appear with a similar look as you've just seen here. So let's go ahead and send the echo. And since we're sending a message to ourselves, we'll see it appear here on the screen. You can now edit live photos in new ways. So if I swipe up, I can change the effects so I can loop, I can bounce, or if I take a live photo of like a waterfall or something, I can do a long exposure and it'll create a really amazing look. So if I tap on this bounce one, it will apply this and it's basically going to go to one direction and then reverse. And so you can add these cool effects. The App Store gets a brand new look. And so we have this today view where we get some behind the scenes kind of editorialized information as well as a quick link to grab the app that this is about. And so as you scroll through, you'll see a variety of different apps, different features, things that kind of help you catch up with apps that you might be interested in. And you can go through all the way back through several days. So if you're not checking the app store every day, you're still gonna be able to find that. There's the game section that highlights these different games that they love, games that maybe you should try, the top paid. And if you go over into apps, we now see there's a separation between apps and games as you start to go through the app store. For updates, we have a new look here. You can see some of the notes a little bit better. And then search is a little bit bigger as well. So you're gonna be able to see a little bit better as you start looking for things in the App Store. You can now scan a document right into notes without a third party app. So I just need to position it so that it sees the whole note. And eventually it will settle on that and automatically take the picture I don't need to touch anything on the screen I can save it and now I can see everything on this document I have a real clear version that I can send to someone iOS 11 has a new music app so you'll see some overall new looks throughout including when you're playing music and you can also tap on your profile icon up here and now we have this area where I have my shared playlists. I can see what I'm listening to. I can search for friends so I can create a social network inside of Apple Music from people whose music playlists and musical tastes I want to follow. And if I click on edit up here, I can change around some of this. I can change who can follow me. And I can even select which of my playlists will actually show up on my profile. If I don't want everyone to see all of my playlists, I can keep some of them hidden. There are a variety of new photos app features, including a new memories option that will recognize your pets and you can create memories 
based right around them. Apple's automatically selecting and picking all of these pictures. I can go over to albums and one of the cool things is people, the facial recognition you do is going to sync across your devices now so it won't be limited just to where you originally took the picture and where you tagged that at. And we're even seeing Apple start to pick up on animals although it doesn't differentiate between the two poodles that we have here because they look pretty similar. If you use the health app to track your activity throughout a variety of third-party apps or the Apple Watch, you'll like this because now you're gonna be able to have all of your health activity backed up into iCloud. There's now an option in your iCloud settings to back up your health data so that way it's going to go to your new phone. With iOS 11 makes it way easier to manage your iPhone storage. First off, we can offload unused apps. So if I'm not using apps, the iPhone will save that, store, save that data and it will automatically remove the app so that I'm not going to run out of space if I'm not using that app. I can review my large attachments so that I can decide if I want to get rid of that. I can choose to delete an attachment directly from the area here so I don't have to go in and dig through my messages and just delete messages. I can also see what's taking up most of my storage and if I want to, I can go in here, I can choose offload this app which will keep the data but remove the app or I can choose to delete the app which will take all the data as well. With the camera app you can now scan QR codes right inside so when I point at the QR code it detects it and I can tap on that up in Safari and this will do it for a variety of different things where a QR code is useful so it's not just for going to a web page it might be to add a contact or tons of other different features. In iOS 11 you can set up an emergency SOS option to auto call when you press the power button five times quickly and you can choose whether you want to count down sound or not. So if I quickly press the power button five times, it's going to give this alert and do a countdown and unless I hop, it's going to call emergency services for my area. iOS 11 makes it easy to record your screen. Just swipe up from your control center and go ahead and choose screen recording and you hit start recording and it'll get a countdown and you'll start recording your screen. If you're trying to take a top-down photo that is perfectly aligned and you have grids on now, you'll be able to line up and take a perfectly balanced photo with that little level that you see there. There's a new screenshot tool in iOS 11, so when you take a screenshot, it'll appear down here in the corner and if you tap on it, it'll pop up and you're gonna be able to quickly make some annotations or edits or something like that and you can even drop a signature on, type some text in here, and when I'm done, I can send it to someone, or if I'm done, I can save it to photos, or simply just delete the screenshot if I don't want it anymore. Now, if I take a screenshot and I wanna get rid of it, I just swipe it to the left and it is gone. If you're using AirPods with iOS 11, you can now set a different control for the double tap for left versus right. So if I want one side to control Siri and the other side to perform a different option, I can now do that. It really expands the usability of your AirPods. If you want to control the way applications use your location, in iOS 11, Apple makes it possible to choose while using the app as an option, even if the app doesn't support it. In this case, Uber does support it, but if the app doesn't allow it, you can still choose while using the app and it's not going to be able to get your location while you are having that app open in the background. Safari includes new tools like this one that will allow you to prevent cross-site tracking so that advertisers can't follow you across websites. And you can also allow Safari to be part of Siri search suggestions. So when you're using Siri to look for things, you might see items related to your browsing. In iOS 11, there's a new way that you can view your app and website passwords right on your iPhone. And when you need to sign into something in an app, you're gonna be able to access that. So here, it's going to be able to pull up my password that's stored, even though Netflix doesn't have any actual support for password managers.
When you need to join a Wi-Fi network at a friend's house, they can actually just push the password right to your iPhone so you don't have to enter it and they don't have to remember it. HomeKit doesn't look a lot different in iOS 11, but you're gonna get new features. You're gonna be able to add speakers, not just the HomePod, but other speakers, and Apple's adding AirPlay 2 support to iOS 11. Apple also adds support for Apple Pay, which will allow you to pay other people using messages. Another feature is the Apple Pay cash card, which you can use money that friends send you to pay for things in store where Apple Pay is accepted. Apple Maps also gains support for maps inside locations like airports and restaurants, and you're able to finally get lane guidance on Apple Maps. Better support for augmented reality through ARKit should supercharge games on the iPad and iPhone. The new iPad keyboard lets you flick to use secondary letters. On the iPad, you can also drag and drop from one app to the other while multitasking. The iPad now has a new multitasking option, which makes it easier to quickly pull up and use two apps on screen at the same time. The iPad dock gains new features, which allow you to add more apps to the dock and to better use 3D Touch to access your information. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to check out gotabemobile.com for more on what's new in iOS 11.